Did you know there are certain times of the day specific foods and other supplements you should be taking D3 with? Did you know there's a cis and a trans form of vitamin K2 and most supplements you buy may actually have wrong form? Hi, my name is Dr. Sabali Pal. I'm a professor in bariatric medicine and I also have a background in nutrition. I have published over 90 papers in peer-reviewed journals in my career and received millions of dollars worth of funding to do lots of clinical trials in nutrition, weight loss, fitness, and chronic diseases. I've also coached thousands of people through the years with weight loss. Today, I will discuss how adequate vitamin D levels are crucial for metabolic well-being, and much more. Did you know that vitamin D controls the expression of about 3% of the human genome, which just goes to show you how important it is for many biological processes. It's pretty incredible and very powerful. However, obtaining sufficient amounts of vitamin D solely from sunlight can be very challenging, especially if you lack regular sun exposure. Additionally, few food sources naturally contain vitamin D3, contributing to the major global risk of deficiency. Close to half of the Australian population is deficient in vitamin D, and 40% of the U.S. is deficient as well. When you learn in this video all the things in your body that vitamin D impacts, I'm positive that you will ensure that your vitamin D3 levels are appropriate to meet your body's requirements. Now, food sources of vitamin D include oily fish, such as salmon, sardines, mackerel, red meat, liver, pasteurized eggs and yolks, most dairy food products like cereals and whole grains and some orange juice brands are fortified with vitamin D. However, it is really difficult to get what you need from foods unless you're having like cod liver oil, which is a great source of vitamin D. Sunlight, UVB rays, may be the main source of vitamin D in the summer months as they trigger vitamin D production in our skin from cholesterol. However, unless you're running around close to naked around the equator, most experts would agree that it's really challenging to get adequate vitamin D intake through the sun or all year long to meet your body's needs and prevent deficiencies. Therefore, the usual recommended intakes in most clinics is approximately 4,000 IUs for adults. However, discuss with your doctor if you're considering super therapeutic doses beyond these recommendations. It is generally agreed that 50 to 100 nanomoles per liter is considered an adequate blood level to promote overall health. However, to get these levels, the amount of vitamin D supplementation that you may require really depends on your age, weight, medication, health conditions, and other factors as I will explain later in this video. This is where you can work with your health professional to determine what you require to get your blood to acceptable levels. Now, vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin, which means that it accumulates in the body. Although rare, excessive intake can lead to toxicity, so always consider a health professional. However, the next couple of points I'm going to make need to be carefully considered when you're supplementing with vitamin D. Vitamin D is recommended to be taken with the trans form of vitamin K and magnesium to ensure proper functioning. First, magnesium is needed to activate enzymes that convert vitamin D3 into its active form, cholecalciferol. Without sufficient magnesium, vitamin D deficiency can occur even with sun exposure or supplementation. Interestingly, low vitamin D levels can impair intestinal magnesium absorption, potentially worsening vitamin D deficiency. Therefore, maintaining adequate magnesium levels is essential for optimal vitamin D utilization. Aim for about four to 500 milligrams of magnesium glycinate daily from supplements or food sources such as dark chocolate, avocado, nuts, leafy vegetables, or legumes. Secondly, K2 works synergistically with vitamin D3 to maintain calcium balance. While vitamin D3 stimulates intestinal calcium absorption, 
vitamin K2 ensures that the absorbed calcium is directed to your bones and teeth and directs it away from the arterial wall. So this process is very important. You need to take vitamin K2 to prevent vascular calcification, which is the calcium buildup in soft tissue. Now, this is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Now, menaquinone, MK4 and MK7 are the two common forms found in dietary supplements. However, it is the trans form of MK7 that is biologically active form of vitamin K2 and the natural form we get from the diet. So when buying K2 supplements, make sure it specifies the trans form of MK7. If it doesn't, then it probably contains a mixture of both cis and trans form. A product that specifically indicates that it contains only the trans form of MK7 is Super K by Life Extension. This product is considered superior because it aligns with the form found in nature. So I'm not affiliated with Life Extension and do not benefit from recommending their products, but it's just something I think you should consider. As a general guideline for every 4,000 to 10,000 I use of vitamin D3, one capsule of a high quality vitamin K supplement like Super K2 should be considered as a supplement regime. One tablet of Trans K2 is generally about 100 20 micrograms. Now, MK7 is also found in foods like natto, which is a Japanese dish made by fermented soybeans. So when do you take vitamin D3 supplement? It's suggested that vitamin D3 be taken in the morning as some anecdotal reports suggest that supplementing with vitamin D at night might interfere with your sleep. However, scientific data to prove this is currently unavailable. Now, vitamin D3 is a fat-soluble vitamin, which means that it does not dissolve in water, best absorbed in your bloodstream when consumed with high-fat foods. Therefore, studies suggest that having vitamin D supplements with a large meal or a source of fat can significantly improve absorption. According to a study involving 17 people taking vitamin D with the largest meal of the day, increased vitamin D levels by about 50% after just two to three months. Another study with 50 older adults found that consuming vitamin D alongside a fat heavy meal increased vitamin D blood levels by 32% after 12 hours compared to a fat free meal. Eating nutrient rich sources of fat such as avocado, nut seeds, full fat dairy products and eggs with your vitamin D with your vitamin D supplement can boost its absorption. Now the link between vitamin D and disease. Vitamin D through its active form and interaction through the vitamin D receptor VDR controls the expression of about 3% of the human genome. This includes thousands of genes involved in various biological processes such as cell proliferation, immune function, and metabolism. It's fascinating to consider that a single nutrient can have such a broad impact on our genetic expression, affecting numerous pathways and physiological functions. This also highlights the importance of maintaining optimal vitamin D levels to prevent various chronic diseases, including cancer, obesity, diabetes, autoimmune disorders, and infections like COVID-19, which I will discuss in next week's video. Why are vitamin D deficiencies so prevalent? First, not getting enough vitamin D3 in your diet. Many of us also do not get enough sun because we're inside 80 to 90 percent of the time. And we also tend to wear SPF 50 plus sunscreen and cover up with clothing because of the fear of skin cancers or skin aging. Now, living in Australia for the past 30 years, I barely get enough sun on my skin because I wear so much sunscreen and I don't want any photo damage to my skin. So my vitamin D levels have always been low. Obesity is also associated with low vitamin D levels. Fat cells sequester vitamin D, so it's not released into the bloodstream. In addition, obese people who are exposed to the same sunlight or UV light as non-obese individuals may produce only half of the amount of vitamin D3. When someone is both obese and has low vitamin D levels, their risk of insulin resistance increases significantly. 
obese individuals often need to take a larger dose of vitamin D supplements to maintain normal levels. On top of this, if you have had any weight loss surgery to reduce the size of your stomach or your small intestines, your body has difficulty absorbing sufficient quantities of certain nutrients, minerals, and vitamins such as vitamin D. Now, skin pigmentation, like mine, can significantly affect your body's ability to produce vitamin D in response to sunlight. Darker skin or olive skin contains melanin, a natural pigment determining skin color. Melanin acts as a natural sunscreen but also reduces vitamin D production. Therefore, people with darker skin like me require more dietary and more intense ultraviolet radiation exposure to get more production of vitamin D in skin, leaving risk of deficiencies of vitamin D because most of us don't go out in the sun. On top of this, many ethnic women cover up with clothing due to cultural reasons, which is why some women are more vulnerable. Older people tend to have thinner skin and less oil in their skin. Your skin makes vitamin D when exposed to sunlight, but as you get older, it just doesn't work as well. So as you get older, it becomes easier to become vitamin D deficient. You can also become vitamin D deficient with certain medical conditions such as cystic fibrosis, Crohn's disease, and celiac disease. These inflammatory conditions can prevent your intestines from adequately absorbing enough vitamin D. Kidney and liver diseases can reduce the amount of enzymes your body needs to change the vitamin D to a form that it can use. A lack of these enzymes lead to inadequate level of active vitamin D in your body. Certain medications can lower vitamin D levels, including blood pressure medications, antibiotics, antacids, laxatives, steroids, cholesterol lowering drugs, seizure preventing drugs such as Barbitol, Rifapen, Orlistat. So hopefully you can now understand why so many people around the world are so vulnerable to vitamin D deficiency. Even if you live in a sunny place like Australia, as I explained in this video, there are so many factors that come into play with having the right amount of vitamin D in your system to meet your body's needs, like your place of habitation, age, weight, medical conditions, diet, your skin color, medications, and therefore supplements can be an effective way to boost your blood levels of vitamin D, which is crucial to your health. Also, you need to consider taking vitamin D3 along with trans vitamin K2 and magnesium as these three nutrients work together to play essential roles in various physiological functions. And so combining them can enhance their effectiveness and health benefits. Therefore, if you are considering vitamin D supplementation, it's best to consult a healthcare professional for personalized advice so they can give you the appropriate amount according to your health status. I hope this video has been helpful. Have a look at last week's video in which I discussed when is the right time to walk or move your body to get the best bang for your buck when it comes to fat loss and health. But to really get the results you want, make sure you come back to next week's video. I will discuss how adequate vitamin D levels are crucial for immune function, weight loss, bone health, cancer prevention, sleep, metabolic well-being, and much more. If you've enjoyed the contents of this video, please like and subscribe and share it with anybody who might benefit from it. This is Dr. Sabali Pal. See you next week.